Meantime, a global pandemic, homes without running water or electricity, a fight for funding to spur future growth. These are all things Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez has tried to tackle in his four years of leading our country's largest reservation. Now, as he gets ready for a new chapter, he spoke to me exclusively at last week's inauguration. On a day where Arizona welcomed its new slate of leaders, another leader in our state prepares to say goodbye. It's bittersweet, as they say, you know, I mean, there was so much we've done over the past four years with the help of the Navajo people and of course our partners. Navajo Nation President Jonathan Nez speaking with me exclusively at the state capitol last week, immediately following Governor Katie Hobbs inauguration. His four years in office coming to an end later today after losing his election in November to incoming President Boo Nigren. His supporters crediting the Nez administration with giving the Navajo Nation a higher profile. We brought in uh, probably a historic amount of funding to the Navajo Nation uh, in terms of uh, CARES Act, ARPA, and infrastructure funding to also give us a shot in the arm here on the Navajo Nation. Not many people knew 30 to 40 percent of our Navajo people don't have running water or electricity in the most powerful nation in the world. And now because of the historic amount of funding coming in, we're addressing that. But perhaps what will define the Nez administration the most is their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. At one point, the Navajo Nation had the highest infection rate in the entire country. I remember talking with you in Window Rock in the summer of 2020, yeah. and the Navajo Nation was just coming out of that surge, but really still in the throes of it. Yeah. How difficult was that time period for you as president? I think any elected official uh, don't know how to prepare for a public health emergency like we went through. Um, but we did follow the science. We followed our public health experts. And I did create a uh, team, a response team to guide me and to also guide the Navajo people. And of course, we have put some very strict protocols in place. But uh, because of that, I think we really truly saved many lives uh, on the Navajo Nation. I wouldn't change a thing. Maybe I lost the election because of that, I don't know. But still, all I wanted to do was make sure that our Navajo people were alive. And I think that's what's gonna be remembered about our administration. As far as his future, President Nez tells me He's leaving his options open. I think uh, there's more to come. I mean, I'm not done. Uh, there's other opportunities before me, and who knows, you know, we'll see what uh, the creator has in store for, for me and my family. Would you consider running for president again in four years? Well, four years is a long time, but there's other opportunities in the, in the near future. Uh, you know, I, I was a county board of supervisor at one time, and so maybe uh, state politics, maybe federal politics, who knows? Or just to stay home and be with my boys. They're growing up. They all knew, they've known politics most of their lives. And I think they'd be uh, happy having their dad home a little bit more too. President-elect Boo Nigren will take his oath of office later today. He will be the Navajo Nation's youngest president at 36. His vice president, Rochelle Montoya, is going to be the first female to hold that role. I spoke with the Nigren administration recently, and we're hoping to have a sit-down with him after he takes office. But great perspective here, giving us really an inside look at his plans for the future and all he has done in just those four years. Right, and it has been a lot. Think about what has been crammed in in the world in yeah. those last four years. Years. And we talked a lot about COVID. Obviously, I was up there right after they were getting done with that surge. And you heard him there say he might have lost the election because of those COVID restrictions. And he was criticized because some people thought they were too strict. But as he said, he doesn't regret any of it. And he feels like it helped save lives. You can see those stories are up at ABC15.com.